Mike's music method. Dee -doo 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 -doo. I realize that um, you guys have a lot of questions and I often don't have time to answer them because Mike's music method is not my day job. Hopefully it will be soon if you guys continue with your very awesome and generous donations. But in the meantime, I have all sorts of questions from you guys and um, also questions from FJ. I won't say who that is because he's embarrassed for some reason. But the first one, the F is a title and the J is his name. So FJ is, has played a lot of instruments, but he's new to the guitar and he has a lot of beginner questions. Um, remember, no questions are stupid. We, we, I could call it a stupid question, but no questions are stupid. All questions are valid if, it's, if you're curious and it's bringing you closer to the truth. So th these are my, um, whatever. I wanna, I wanna answer you guys' questions. This is the Mike's Music Method Q&A, doing it from the road with my new awesome fancy camera gear. I'll reveal what it is at the end if anyone has any guesses. All right, so the question is what the heck, uh, why am I having so much trouble with a bar chord, right? What, what, you know, the damned F chord. And here, before we even start on talking, you know, some, you, you can look up answers, right? How do you play the F chord? How do you do a bar chord? Right, the movable bar chord. We call it movable. It's an E shape, right? If you take that E major chord and you pretend your first finger was like a capo, then it's movable. You get F major, F sharp major, G major, G sharp. And it is hard to play, especially on certain guitars. But before we get into that, ask yourself, why am I playing a bar chord? Right? I Dare I say that bar chords are overrated? I don't think they're overrated, but, but they shouldn't be the solution to every single chord. So if you think about an F chord, an F is just three notes, F, A, C, right? Here's an F, here's a C on the first fret, and then an A is the second fret. So one, one, that's an F chord. Right? That's, that's fairly easy to play, right? That's easy. <laughs> There's another F chord up here, right? I've got eight, 10, 10. Eight on the first string, 10, 10, that's an F. So first ask yourself, do I need to play more than that? Right, if you're in a big band setting, if you have a bass player and he's playing a low F, do you have to play a big F? Do you have to play that many notes? In my opinion, this is kind of muddy, this big bar chord. So you can always simplify it by learning these basic little triad shapes. And there's tons of resources on that, on like how to find all these different triad shapes. Right, all different places you can play an F. If you don't know about the cage system, that's something you can look into. I haven't done videos on that because there's a pretty exhaustive, um, the content's all over the place, unlike Towns, you know, picking tutorials. The cage system's out there. Guys have done pretty good and thorough jobs of explaining that already. So an F chord. If you do want to play it bigger, like in a lot of town songs and Blaze Foley and all Doc Watts and all these other guys I'm covering, there's several ways to play it that are not just the bar chord shape. So let's break this down. First off, if you do really absolutely want to play a bar chord, I don't have too much advice except to build it up slowly. So here is one way to build it up slowly. Don't play the first string. We're going to play the first fret. Look at that camera work. Look at that. We got the first fret on the second string. One. Then two on the third string with your middle finger. Then I'm going to do my pinky on the third string. Or sorry, on the fourth string, third fret. And then my ring finger as a third fret. Now you'll notice it's an F chord, but without the bar. So it's the same notes, but I'm just putting my index finger on the second string. It's technically an F chord with a C in the bass, but who really cares if we're just strumming this, playing it? That sounds nice, right? I can pick all those. It supplies a nice sounding F chord. Now, if you want to get fancier, there's a couple things you can do just from this shape. You can get rid of that first finger and put it on the sixth fret. Now notice, I'm not barring the top two. I'm just doing these low ones. So six, five, four, three, and that's it. That's also a nice sounding F chord. That's how like punk rockers are gonna play it. Right, if you got distortion, you're not often playing the top ones. Now if we go back to that other one where it's in the middle, eventually you can start to use a little more strength to bar that first finger. So now I have one, one two, three, three. Right, I don't have the sixth string, but I can play it like that. So that's another way to think about it. Let me kneel. I guess my camera uh, stand isn't the most perfect thing. So again, this uh, it's like an F chord, but we're not barring. We can put this first finger in all these different spots, on the first string, on the second, right? We can bar the first and the second, or we can play the six. And then eventually you are gonna build up to that bar. A few things to note with that bar is that 
instead of going straight on like this, I'm often rolling, I'll exaggerate, right? I'm using the side of my finger, not that far to the side, but I'm not pushing it straight on. It's not direct, it's slightly angled out. Now don't put any other fingers down, just do that first finger. I'm using kind of the fingertip to get the sixth string. And then I'm using the side of my finger. It's hard to give you the best angle to get the first and second strings. And you'll see if it buzzes. And now you'll notice like my fourth or my fifth, my fourth and my third aren't sounding. I'm only using the strength to squeeze down where I need to. Because again, when we get to practice of it, all of those are gonna be held down. So you don't need to waste your energy trying to get every single one. To sound like a bar right we don't need all those strings to me that requires way more energy than just my fingertip here and just the the fat of my finger over here to get the top two because that's all you really need to sound so experiment with that get rid of these other fingers and go okay what does that first finger really need to be doing and now some guys are going to cheat up more they're going to lift that finger higher because the way their their finger oh, that's a lot tougher for me because when I get to this part of my finger, it doesn't work. So I'm pretty much fingertip and then barring by bending that over to the side. Again, some guys are gonna be a little higher because their hands are bigger. Um, some guys will, will be real low and they'll just barely touch that F string to get it. For me, it's like a fingertip and then I'm rolling to the side of the finger to get those other ones. But your hand is unique, so don't do it exactly how I'm doing it. Do it how you need to do it. So those are a couple of pointers as ways to build up into the F chord. Uh, but here is a great trick too. This is called the Leonard Cohen trick. And then I'm saving the most valuable one for the end here. The Leonard Cohen trick I've talked about quite a few times before. And it's great when you're finger picking because we just get rid of the, this fifth string. Because often when we finger pick, we're going from six to four. But even if you're not finger picking, it's, it's still applicable and I'll show you how. So you play your regular F bar chord. You're gonna lift your pinky. You don't need to use it. We're gonna get rid of the pinky on the fourth string, right? And then our ring finger is gonna go down to the fourth string. Now you'll notice it's an F chord, but we have no fifth string. What's happening is my first finger is muting that fifth string. I have first fret, mute. Now my ring finger is playing the fourth string on the third fret. My, set, my middle finger is still on the second fret, and then my, I'm barring one and one. And I call it the Leonard Cohen one because he uses that voicing in Suzanne a lot. And now you can finger pick that big F chord as long as your um, thumb's jumping from six to four. Because we're never playing the fifth string, so why fret it? Right, we're always being thoughtful about what we're actually doing instead of default bar chord, default bar chord, default bar chord. Because we're not always strumming the whole big thing. And sometimes you don't want a big old sound, right? If you think about like ska and reggae, we go back to that first F shape. Right, you want that thin sound. So what would be the point of using all these muscles to do the whole thing if you're only going to hit the top notes? Right? Make it easier on yourself. Right? And just focus on what you actually need to play. So that's the Leonard Cohen trick. And you can still strum it that way too, as long as this first finger is bent a little bit so that fifth string is muted. Uh, guitar here and now here is my absolute favorite one I'm kneeling my knees hurt which is I learned it from Merle Travis Doc Watson does it all the time Towns does it I'm sure all of these guys well many of them have adapted this great F shape okay so we're not gonna play the first string for now we can add it later but we have that one two three right we got the staircase first fret on the second string second fret on the third third fret on the fourth Right, an F chord without, don't worry about the high E for now. Right, my first finger is gently muting it. And now thumb over the top. People have asked a lot about this too. What's up with that thumb over the top chord? I unfortunately don't have too many pointers. Everyone's hand is a little bit different. Everyone's got a different size guitar. I don't have huge hands, um, but I can get it over the top even on a uh, Sorry, I'm trying to avoid all the inappropriate jokes, but <laughs> um, but I can still get that thumb over the top here to get that F. Some people reach way more. Other people only need a little bit. And I do remember learning this. My thumb did, it did hurt for a while. 
I don't have a crystal clear memory because I was probably like 15 or 16 when I learned this shape. So it's been too long, 20 something years. <laughs> um, but that thumb is over the top and that's how I get it. Now experiment with how you're reaching. You really, again, like just do the thumb alone for a while. How hard do you need to squeeze to get a tone? Can you do a different angle? Uh, that's how I'm doing it, right? I don't know how else to explain it, but I got that F chord and I'm reaching my thumb over the top. I will say that I, I'm getting a pretty solid grip. Like I'm breaking the rules in terms of like the fat of my hand is grabbing most of that guitar. You know what I mean? I'm, I have a pretty big contact point there. Fat of the hand's grabbing it. So it's breaking the rules where like you shouldn't be touching it, but, but floating, you know, the fat is really close. My wrist is like slightly, you know, it's slight, it's not like this. It, the angle's terrible. It slightly goes up like that. Not a ton. My wrist isn't like crazy bent, but there's a bit of an angle to it when I grab it like that. Now this is a great shape because you can finger pick from six to four. You got all those fun fingers. If you want, you can move the index finger down so you can jump it from here to here. Right second string first. Or you can bar it once you get good at that. I have the thumb barring my first. I know that's hard. It's going to take some time. The reason this is great is because now our pinky has all this cool freedom. Right, you can get the major six in there, which is the third fret on the second string. You can occasionally, it's, it's hard in this position. You can get the flat seven by reaching to the fourth fret. It's easier when you get higher up. Let's do it on A for a second, the fifth fret. You can bar it, so you got that five on the top. You think you can go on the first string on the seventh fret and then the eighth. And then you get these cool little, you can do like a 12 bar blues. So if I start on G, I'm on the third fret. To the eighth fret, that's a C chord, back to G. And then the 10th fret, <laughs> I can't reach on the nylon. You get the idea, you get this cool little movable shape with all these fun notes in there. My travel guitar is not made for this. So that's my favorite way to play the G shape. You can get all sorts of fun things going on. Really movable with that thumb and those first three fingers. And then it frees up your pinky to do cool little melodic runs in there. So that is my video on that damned F chord. There's not just one way to play it. Always be thoughtful of what the song calls for. And most of all, be patient with yourself, right? These, these, you have to build up the muscles. It's not just the muscles, but think of any workout. Like you can mess up the tendons, you can mess up the nerves. So go slow. I, I stretch. I recommend stretching your wrist. Um, I don't have any videos on that. I want to do one. I have a great buddy who's down in Austin, who's a physical therapist. And I want to do a video with him together where we could talk about the appropriate stretches for guitar and whatnot. But be patient with yourself like FJ has told me and probably many others you begin slow bite off what you can chew right just like in your prayer life don't you can't get too excited maybe you can but then you'll overdo it you go all right i'm gonna do an hour every day but then after like two weeks are you still really doing that hour or have you like totally dropped off and now you feel discouraged and you this feeling of defeat so don't do that spend a little bit of time on that f chord every day maybe it's five minutes then maybe it's 10 minutes and then before you know it you're just playing the F chord. You don't have to think about it. So let me know if you guys have any more questions and let me know how you progress with this, if this was helpful, if there's anything else very specifically you're stuck on. Let me know. Comment below and I will answer it in the next video. And I'll do more of these where they can just be off the, off the, off the cuff, off the cup. I don't even know what that phrase means. I guess I do, off the cuff. Anyway, I'm not good with these phrases. It's things you say all the time. I'm going to stop rambling. I do that. But these videos will be fun. I can bring you content without feeling like I have to be in my special little room with my special microphone and camera. I've got a phone and I can bring you more content if I'm just a little more relaxed about it. Let me know if this is still just as valuable. I hope it is. I think it is. And God bless you all. Have a great day. Ciao.